What's up guys, Shane here from VDark3D Printing, and today we're going to check out some bronze filament from Banggood. Welcome back guys, I said we have some bronze filament here from Banggood. They sent me a bunch of different goodies to try out, and I said I wanted to try some of the filament that they have on the site. It uh, really doesn't have a name to it, it's just 3D printing filament. And I've never tried anything that's really like the no-name filament. Everything I have has some type of brand, whether it being super duper cheap like Fun Flag at $7.99 a roll, to pretty expensive stuff from like Protopasta, Turner Plastics, Push Plastics, things like that. Those are a little more expensive, a little more premium filaments is what I consider them. So we're gonna dive in and see if this is something you might want to buy. All right. So the first off, with uh, this is a 500 gram roll, not a kilogram. So that already is a little bit down for me. I prefer buying kilogram rolls. I do huge prints. We're probably not gonna be doing that in this just because it's not that much filament. Just tells us here the filament color is bronze. The outside diameter is 1.5, 1.75 millimeter filament. Uh, the extrusion temperature should be 195 to 220. And the dimensional accuracy is plus or minus 0 0.05 millimeters, which is pretty standard for most um, companies. It's just a pretty simple box. You know, front and back are the same. A couple stickers here for the SKUs and whatnot. And once we're inside, we've got a little bit of bubble wrap. And we have, again, a pretty thin roll. Uh, and this design looks just like uh, a few other filament manufacturers. So Mars 3D has a 1.2 kilogram roll in this same design. And then I believe uh, Ziltec's new uh, filament is also in this bowl design, but it's a one kilogram roll. Again, this is only half. So here on the side, it says 3D printing filament bronze. It's basically exact same as what that sticker said and nothing else anywhere on there. So let's see what the wine looks like and if this smells or not. Ah, I didn't really get my knife. All right, it's got a big silica pack, which is good. And the wine looks all right. Not crazy. It's, I've, I've only ever really had, who had Philibot had a half kilogram roll. No, they were 750 grams. I don't think I've ever done a filament roll this light before, only 500 grams. I mean, it's really almost like nothing. Uh, 500 grams, that's probably going to be about 100 and, oh, 130, 160, yeah, I guess maybe 160 meters, if that. It's really not that much filament. Yeah, maybe 130, somewhere around there. It's, it's really not a whole lot of filament in 500 grams. But the reason I asked for this color, because I love the metal filaments, but they are so hard to print, they're so abrasive on your nozzle, and they look amazing but they're also really, really expensive. I mean, some of the stuff from Protopasta is 80 to $100 just for like half kilogram or a kilogram. That's just crazy. So I wanted to see if, number one, a no-name filament is any good, and two, how is a metal filament, a metal colored filament look? You know, I can't really compare it because I don't have any of those, but I just want to see how does this look like? If I print a coin, if I print a little Buddha guy, does it look like he's actually made of bronze? So that is the test. I'm going to print this out with a bunch of different models and let's see how it turns out. So as you guys can see here, I printed a ton of different models. I did this on two different printers, and I am honestly astounded by the quality from a no-name brand filament from Banggood that it just did this well. So I did have a few issues with uh, some power losses, but then I went ahead and switched over from my GTEx to the Anycubic i3 Mega, which has a resume function if a power outage happens. And then I didn't have a single power outage for any of these other prints. So that's okay. But either way, let's go ahead and show through the prints. I tried to printing a bunch of different things, try and test the film as best I could. So again, let's take a look at it. So per the normal, I had to print my Maker Coin, which again, I love this model. It's just super fun to print out on all these different filaments. As you can see here on the top, 
It looks absolutely perfect. It's a little pointy right here on this part, but aside from that, that looks great. Now the bottom side looks great as well. This is on the Anycubic i3 Mega. So it has like a glass, that ultra base uh, build plate. It's kind of like glass, kind of isn't. So it's really super flat here, but doesn't have that sheen that you get from PEI or glass. And over the support, you said it, I mean, it did pretty good. You know, nothing to write home about, but you know, it didn't fail at all. The walls, I mean, I hope you can see that. It just looks gorgeous. All of it, just no issues whatsoever in those walls. This came out absolutely fantastic. And then I went ahead on to Thingiverse and found this little cat model to print out. Uh, this was printed at a 0.1 millimeter layer height. This, the coin was printed at 0.2. You can see a little bit of the detraction layers. You get this with this kind of silky style filament, unless your retraction is like super spot on. This is, I have it pretty close, but uh, I mean, it, it did really well and under here. There's just no support on this model, so the bottom of the hand just didn't have quite enough cooling in order to make this overhang work out. But other than that, another great, great model. But it did have enough support to go underneath, or it didn't need any support. It had enough on do the overhangs on that hand, which isn't, which basically is 90 degrees. I mean, it's pretty close to it. But either way, this is a great model. This came out absolutely fantastic. Now I wanted to try to test the tolerances of the printer and to see how the filament would turn out. So this is the Deathly Hallows uh, symbol from Harry Potter. And it actually is a necklace. There's a little loop right here. I don't like how that's squared off. That's just the model though. Either I can change that. But I wanted to see how it would work. And I mean, it printed out great. I mean, prints this on the model. It's on, prints down just like that. And yeah, it spins exactly like it has to. Uh, I didn't have to break it or anything like that to break it in. But yeah, the walls came out great. Everything was just, everything was just literally fantastic on this print. There's nothing could have gone wrong on this. Another pendant, this is the Pirates of the Caribbean coin. So this is a single one. It prints standing up like so, with a bunch of support underneath of it. So you can see here how the support just doesn't do too, too well under it, but it did pretty good. It's just a hard model to kind of print that. But yeah, I mean, all the details here came out without a problem. The loop is there. I mean, again, another great model, no real issues here. So I was printing this owl, but it failed. And I did have some Z banding here that I'm trying to fix on the G-Tech Persa i3. But other than that, again, it came out great on the PEI. The first layer is just golly gee beautiful. You know, and it, it just started going out well, but then once it started getting larger and higher up, there was just more and more ringing. So that's, I needed to fix that. But, it, well, not the filament's fault, that's just the printer's fault. But it looked, came out really, really well, though. All right, here's a super simple Benchy on the G-Tech Persa i3. As you can see here, some of the banding, the ringing there. But other than that, again, pretty nice model. Nice bottom layer. The walls are very smooth, aside from the ringing. All the top layers are there. Again, I'm just really mad about that ringing. I gotta fix that again. Okay, and here I wanted to test the tolerances of the printer as well. I wanted to see how it would fit one of these iris models. So this is a print in place, and then there's two tabs, well, four slots on each one of these that you need to cut, and then you just gotta break it, and then all of a sudden you have this closing iris Venus box. And then I wanted to just go absolutely crazy and print something super duper detailed. So this is the like yell, something yell, like Viking yell model. Uh, this is really meant for like an SLA printer to, for it to come out well. I think it came out pretty good for an FDM printer. This is at 0.1 millimeter layer height. There's a bunch of uh, support all around this. You know, this pillar is very detailed. His hair is super detailed. This is actually the highest resolution model that they had. It was like, I think 300 megs for an STL file, which is crazy high compared to the lowest model, which is like one meg or maybe it was 11. Either way, tiny comparison to this, but this came out really good actually. Not a whole lot to complain about. I mean, obviously the tips of the beard that were on support are gonna have a little bit of issue, but honestly, aside from that, it just came out absolutely beautiful. And then uh, of course down here, this is some of the, the support prints on top of this top layer. So you just need to clean up a little bit more. I cleaned up most of it, but then I got kind of tired and I stopped, I got lazy, but I like this one. I got two more prints after this to show you. So this is the, I believe this is the G-Create uh, model rocket that they have and it prints in three pieces. So this top piece prints by itself and then you have the entire body of the rocket and then you have this basically the flame, I should print this in red uh, to have that coming out, but it can't stand with that on it. Uh, yeah, this is uh, mostly empty. You know, it's a pretty hollow model, prints just like that. Actually, I printed it like this way, 
and it, it held onto there. But yeah, I mean, this is a no support model. Everything came out really well, just exactly the way it should. No ringing anywhere, so the printer was good. This is on the Anticubic i3 Mega, and very smooth walls. You know, nothing really too bad to write home about. I like it. So here I have two models that have multi-colors in them, and I'm using Simplify 3D and their processes in order to print these. And I'm doing a video right now on that, so once I eventually do it, I'll link it to this video, but for now, you'll have to live without it. It's just a very simple keychain. There's a uh, generator on uh, Thingiverse that you can go ahead and make these with. Fuginator is my tag that I use in a lot of games and whatnot. So the bottom is a one, STL and then where the letters are as a second STL and then you just print the one it homes you take the filament out put the new filament in it starts to print up again and then it starts right where it should and yeah I really like this and I think the the bronze on top of the black looks really really good and then having a bronze filament of course I have to print this Bioshock logo this has been on my things to print list for I think since I got a 3d printer to be honest and this came out absolutely beautiful I mean look at this Look at that. Look at how detailed that is and how perfect it is. There's no stringing or any blobs anywhere or any, any, any scratch marks, you know, the scoring across when your nozzle moves. None of that anywhere. It just came out absolutely great. So you see, black was my first. I think that was about two and a half or three millimeters. And then the rest of it was printed in the bronze PLA from Banggood, you know, and it just did an absolute gorgeous job. This is probably one of the best prints I've ever done, and I am so stoked about it. So last I did the Millennium Falcon, or more notably known to as the Fillennial Malcon on Thingiverse, that way it doesn't get taken down. But yeah, this is an absolutely great model. I've printed this in a bunch of other filaments. I've printed this supersized, but it failed. Uh, just due to a clog on my extruder, not even a clog, it was a bad thermistor, but that was like a year ago. I need to get another roll of gray PLA and reprint the uh, Millennium Falcon full size on the full check FT5, as big as I can make it. So if you cockeye it, make it real big. This is great, I mean, it's a no support model. Again, the printer handled it very, very well. And it, it's a pretty cool color. You can't really see any of the layer lines. You can't feel any of the layer lines. So I call this an absolute success. This was just too awesome. And again, all these prints just came out absolutely great. So I have to say this filament is a little bit pricey on Banggood, but if you're already picking up a 3D printer or if you're in a country that can't get you know, filament very easily like we can here in the States, honestly, it's worth a pickup. If you're gonna already buy the printer, this is definitely worth buying it. Again, a little expensive, but if you want that kind of bronze color look, why not? It's a simple PLA filament that gives a, honestly, it really is an awesome color. I think it is. It just honestly was absolutely blown. I totally expect this to fail. I'm not going to lie, guys. I totally expected this filament to fail, but that fact that it didn't just, again, blows my mind. Love it. Love it. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful. I hope this made you decide whether or not you want to buy this filament. I'll put a link down in the video description if you do. So if you're going to pick up a CR10 or any other printers hosted there on Banggood, make sure you use the links down below. And then again, check out this filament. It's not too bad. My last minute disclaimer is that this was sent to me by Banggood for the purpose of this review. No money was exchanged to me or to them. I didn't pay them. They didn't pay me. Uh, all they did was give me this spool to print with. So I thank them for that, for the spool and I thank them for the opportunity to work with them. All right, guys, thank you for watching so much. If you like this video, if you think I did a good job of testing it out, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Talk in the comments down below. I would love to hear from you. If you want to support my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell icon, get an email notification anytime I upload new content. That way you will be one of the first ones to know what hit the street. So if you want to help me financially, down below, Patreon link. Donate me a dollar more. I greatly appreciate it. My current Patreons, as always, you guys are awesome. I thank you so much for what you do for me. It helps me buy filament and other items for this channel, so thank you so much. If you want to support me without spending your money, down below is going to be a slew of affiliate links. Please update your bookmarks with those, do your daily shopping, and a little slice of what you buy comes back here to me. So I think that wraps it up. I thank you guys for watching so, so much. And until next time, happy printing.